Ah, it's been a day, listener. But for you, it's the beginning of the week. And what a week will it will be. Oh, the places you'll go, bottom. Will you bottom on a train? Will you bottom in the south of Spain? Will you bottom on a boat? Will you bottom with a goat? <laughs> patreon.com slash whgs to buy me a vacation yeah you can donate as little as one dollar a month it really really helps and it's going to help my special and get on my text alert to find out when my special drops and i'll send you a text about that um and i'm touring all over um god really all over i'm going to winnipeg later going to dallas i'm going to phoenix i'm going to salt lake city it's nuts it's crazy it's amazing thank you for making it possible i I really and if you were already donated i see you and i love you Thank you from the bottom of my heart, which you know is hard to reach. It's hard for me to be a bottom, but you make me feel that way sometimes, bottoms. We're all bottoms at heart. And then this week, we have my dear friend, Remy Casimir, her famous podcast, How Come, which talks about orgasming and having trouble orgasming. And we talk about that today on the podcast, and we also get into a little bit of TikTok lesbian drama with Brie and another a TikToker who I won't name because we're all a little frightened about what's going to happen after this episode comes out. It's T. Have a good one, listener. Have a great week. Uh, Seriously, I did not sleep well last night, and I love you. Listener, this episode is brought to you by your favorite place to curl up and have gay sex, Helix Sleep. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Listener, this episode is sponsored by Dipsy. Do you like sexy audio stories? Then you got to check out Dipsy, this new app, just for for getting, for getting that self-care, if you know what I mean, on. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash gay. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash gay. That's dipsystories.com slash gay. Okay, my only thing is that I will say I'm in a, like, a kind of sexual orgasm drought. Like, it's really hard to come. My favorite toy is not working. I feel oh. very, like, weird in my body recently. I'm, I'm upset about it. There are some days that I'm just like, I just really want to come. I just want to come, and then I'll sit down and do my work. But in the beginning of c***ing, it was, like, every day, three times a day. And now I'm like, did I use them up? No, you didn't <laughs> use them up. Here's the thing, you guys. This is an interesting episode because we have two people who I I really love and care about. Um, people that I would describe as some of my best friends. Wow. <laughs> wow, news to Remy. And news to Remy. And here's the other thing. Bree and I have... Look, I thought Bree and I were best friends, but we recently... We recently had a fight on the air yeah. Ooh. in that if you haven't watched. No, nope, Remy, <laughs> don't worry. It's not an actual fight. Here's the thing about Remy. Remy fucking loves, loves drama. tea. Yeah, Remy, if You're you like, are oh looking for a hot take, Remy is the Instagram. Remy oh, Casimir. Pew, 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 pew. Demi Casimir. Yes. That is the Instagram that you have to follow because they've got a take on... <laughs> Everything happening on the internet. What is your latest hot take, Remy, besides me and Brienne and whether or not we're best friends? My latest hot take is I've been locked out of Instagram for the last three weeks because (gasps) I posted a picture of my sister when she was really little on her birthday or whatever, like naked but nothing showing. Like baby, 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 baby. And they put me in something called an ingress timeout stream ID. Um for three no. ingress timeout stream ID. Yeah, there are people listening to the being like, "This is what I have." Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> Hated it, but now I'm not addicted to Instagram anymore. <laughs> All it took you was went, three weeks. Three weeks. You went cold turkey. Yeah, you went Jesus. into a rehab program for social media. Not Started by up choice. vaping again, but <laughs> off Instagram. <laughs> like with any addiction, you just have to immediately replace it with sub it in. It. Yeah. Fill that <laughs> void, baby. Fill yeah. that void. Get over it by getting um, under something else. 
Absolutely. <laughs> We're getting something else inside you in this case. Mm. Um, mm. But Remy, phenomenal comedian, phenomenal podcaster, very good friend, friend of the pod, done a couple episodes, one of my first episodes ever. Yeah. And my fairy pod mother, when I was starting this podcast, uh. Uh, Remy was the person that I went to to learn how to do this. Yeah. And Aww. we went to Madison Diner and it was so fun. I have traumatic. Did I tell you about my traumatic memory at Madison Diner? No. <laughs> so when my father was dying. No. <laughs> Bree, are you OK? <laughs> yes. You seem like you don't want me to talk about this. <laughs> no, please do. Please do. Um. So when my father was dying, my mother has like not great. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. OK, so this is about my bitch ass Aunt Robin, who's been sort of like a theme on the pod. Right. I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about my bitch ass Aunt Robin. I but... haven't yet. This is special. OK, so my, she a diamond episode from 2021. OK, I uh, thought you were saying she a diamond like no, your no, bitch no. ass Aunt Robin is a diamond. I was like, who are you, Ashley? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so she like oh. kind of was sort of outing me a little bit to my family members. Mm. So it prompted me to come out of the closet very quickly to my extended family in a way. Oh, that sucks. I did it on my terms, but it was faster than I thought it yeah. would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I took advantage. I did the best I could in the situation. Mm -hmm. This bitch ass Aunt Robin. Mm. Yeah. But she, I told a story about it on TikTok where I called her a bitch ass <laughs> and my bitch ass aunt Robin. And then she emailed me about it and <laughs> signed your bitch ass. Aunt Robin. <laughs> yeah, she was like, I was enjoying your TikTok till you called me your bitch. Aunt Robin. And I was like, no, 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 no. I called you my bitch ass aunt Robin. Get it right. <laughs> and then we went back and forth about whether or not she was, A whether bitch or not ass? she was out. This, yeah. Well, she was trying to, this like 70, my 75 year old aunt from South Carolina is trying to explain to me why she wasn't outing me. I'm like, I have the authority on this issue. Like, Can I ask <laughs> what was she doing to out you? And also, how did she know before anyone so, else? Yeah. So, yeah. Great question. So Thank I was you. not super in the closet on Facebook or anything. OK. So I had some photos. <laughs> and bitch ass be on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> she was flying the flag on Facebook. <laughs> I guess I don't have any ground to stand on here. Where everyone's <laughs> secrets go to die, Facebook. Oh my that god. Where no one ants no one's aunts and uncles are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this was like 2012. It was 2012. Instagram oh. had just come out. Facebook was still a place. And so for had us you. Young no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> To all of your extended family. Like, <laughs> did you check the friends list before? I don't you decided, know. I wasn't out, out, idea. but I had like photos with women on there. You know okay. what I mean? So I wasn't like saying I'm out. I wasn't saying like my girlfriend this, my girlfriend that, but I was just some light pornography. Ashley Gavin is eating pussy <laughs> status. <laughs> eating I'm pussy. not coming out. I'm just eating <laughs> pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Gavin is romantically oh. interested in women. I have my relationship yeah. status as it's complicated with the girl that I was dating. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, but everybody so used to do that. Remember that? Like that used yes. to piss me off because it would be like then I'd be like looking at people after college and I'd be like, oh, are they gay now or is this just a joke that you're in your relationship with your friend? Right. 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 I get yeah. Like gal pals. Gal yeah. pals are lesbians. What's Honestly, it was a great time for being sort of closeted on the internet because yeah. you could do things like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get away with a lot. Because <laughs> there was just enough homophobia to keep things safe. Now that that not, <laughs> we've gone too far, people bring back the homophobia. Right. If you want to stay closeted, it's harder now because people are more accepting. So they're they're okay mm. being like, "Hey, I love you. Are you in an it's complicated relationship with that woman?" You or you know what I mean? They're like yeah. standing straight people with their friends and being like, "Well, they're in a picture together. They're gay." Mm. Right. It's Kylie just, Jenner it's, is all over my TikTok today with her friend that they're like, come on. See, so you gave up Instagram, but you just went to the drama on TikTok. And I love that for you. Oh, oh, no, no, no. I'm still consuming the drama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not making any drama recently. <laughs> Remy, Remy, you're funny because you make drama, but then no one gets mad at you for it. <laughs> 
You don't think you're anyone just, gets just... mad at me? I've got so <laughs> many like l- landmine enemies out in the really? world. Yeah. Name names. Ooh, I love we'll this. bleep them. I got yelled at by a friend of the Baldwins because I was going too hard on Ilaria. <laughs> No. Yeah. Okay, I need to ask, do you go for like kind of like C list celebs so that there's a chance that they're actually gonna see it and respond? Or do you just No, no Remy's authentic to the craft. I'm Remy goes to after the craft. whoever <laughs> yeah. whoever she's feeling like needs to be taken down. If you're pissing me off and there's also a lot of news around you, I'm like, all mm. right, everybody needs one take and it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Remy, honestly, you're you're Hilaria Baldwin, Hilaria Baldwin, yeah, Ilaria, Ilaria. Baldwin. Uh, stuff was some of the funniest, some Thank of the you. funniest h- Hilaria takes I saw on the internet. Hilarious. Uh, I, I was so looking forward to this episode because I was like, Brie, no shock here. Um, I was not super prepped for this episode. I've been really <laughs> under the weather. That's why we're doing this remotely. Okay. So. I was like, who can I get that I'm going to be so comfy with and the banter is just going to fucking flow? Mm-hmm. And I texted Remy immediately and I mm-hmm. knew, Brie, you'd be down. Well, mm-hmm. I just knew you. I don't know. I thought we, you know, we're best, we're best, we're friends, best, friends. So we're best friends. I feel like we've mended quite a bit since our argument. I think so, too. I was going to say, too, if you don't have an argument ever, are you really friends? Like that's true. You have to fight for it to be real. It can't just otherwise so. you're like colleagues. Yeah. <laughs> if well, you get any not- anonymous bits about Ash to your Instagram once it's relaunched, you know yeah. where it's from. Just saying. Some blind <laughs> items. <laughs> I would love to be in drama, but no one cares about me. <laughs> Maybe I care just, about you. Maybe we should just fake start it. Like, Remy, we'll pay you to write little bits and mix us in with actual celebrities. How can I get Ooh. in on this Jojo Siwa Avery Cyrus? Soap? I was going to say. <laughs> how can I? How can I? Here, here's some tea. Because this this bitch will <laughs> okay. probably repost it. I called yeah. her this bitch. I hope it's I hope it's she, her. Bitch is a gender. This bitch. She, yeah. She it's completely okay, separate thank you. from yeah. the gender binary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. B- yeah. <laughs> bitch is more of a vibe. The bitch is a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> bitch is a lifestyle. Um, Mm-hmm. You know what we sound like? We're three millennials who are like, remember Facebook? A bitch is such a vibe. <laughs> we do. It's, it's giving bitch. How should we get in with Avery and JoJo? <laughs> <laughs> I've got my Squishmallow in the background. I'm like, love me. <laughs> I don't even know what a Squishmallow is. Oh, it's very Gen Z. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is. Well, there's this person on the internet who does, who covers like the lesbian drama. Okay. Named, I think, Kales or something. Oh, I'm scared of this person. Right. So I'm about to invoke, I'm about to invoke her and see what happens. Oh, but basically, okay. like, it's very clear to me that this person, oh my God, really doesn't know anything about the entertainment business. Mm. And yeah, they have is no reporting idea. on this drama from the perspective of like someone who really has never, ever, ever hung out with an actor, musician, celebrity, like ever. Been so behind they don't understand. The wall. Mm-hmm. What's that? They've never been behind the fourth wall. Right. So the way they report on it, which is super appealing because all of the people who care about this Jojo Avery, they're, they're not coming at it from the insider perspective either. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like they don't understand how these, how you can be at the same party and have it and have nothing to do with each other. They don't understand that mm-hmm. the entertainment business, like, you, there's lots of people at a thing, like a premiere or like a, you know, right. they don't, they don't get or a management party. This is party what a lot like of whatever. people have pictures with Epstein say, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people at those parties. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> I don't know anything about the hedge fund world. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend right now. You know what? I picture this person, Kale, as someone on Halloween night, all the lesbians go into their bathrooms and say Kale three times. And if you spin around (laughs) fast enough, she'll fucking appear. Like, she terrifies me. I think she's going to, like, come out in my dreams and destroy my life. She's so vicious with it, too. I don't know what's going on. She really does take things to their absolute logical and, in my opinion, illogical extreme. And people, like, totally live for it. Now I'm getting scared. She has no fear, which is the most terrifying part. Because there's nothing. There's nothing how do i because there's no because she's not in it 
She doesn't have any relationships yeah. or anything meaningful going on in this sphere. Yeah. Kales, I'm sure you're, you have love and relationships and friendships and a healthy life. <laughs> As she's like, Kales has but, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, <laughs> but the thing is like, I have nothing going on. So like, I don't know what the fuck. We are going to get tagged up in one of Kale's things. But it's not, it's not good drama. <laughs> I'm so scared. Because I, Kale is ingesting it from the the viewpoint of what the PR teams want you to see, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, okay. exactly. There's yeah. nothing inside there. Mm. It's not like... <laughs> <laughs> I know that really did make you sound like she has a low like there's nothing going on. <laughs> there's nothing going on up there. No, that's not what I meant. She's just she's just not really in it. And therefore everything is like a speculatory and and But sensationalized. Avery and Jojo do make videos together. Yeah, they're together. Yeah, they're I think aren't they formally out? Yeah, they're yeah. together. So what are we Avery, disputing with Avery Kale? left so sass for Jojo? <laughs> It, that's why it sensationalizes. I don't know what we're. I think. I think we're supposed to be mad at them. I am terrible. I'm so mad. I don't. <laughs> I'm so. I'm so freaking mad. I think there's a whole thing about the breakup between Avery and Soph. But the thing is that we don't mm -hmm. really know anything about the. We don't know these people. You have no idea what this breakup was. I'm just on gonna the come inside. out and be and be real and honest. I'm Team Soph. I don't know what that means. But I'm team self. <laughs> From what and you know I've what, Bree? Just to create drama, I'm team Avery. And I also <laughs> don't know what that means. And me? I see nuance. <laughs> <laughs> Bit about me? <laughs> um. I get where both sides are coming from. No, I'm just I want to know what happens when this, when this kale person... <laughs> kale person... <laughs> Starts to become friends because you know it'll get to the point eventually where they actually become friends yeah. or they hang out with that's people what that it's they're gonna talking all, yeah. about. I guarantee you that's when it's going to all fall apart. Yes, because then it's going to, it, it stops. It's a very fine line, especially when this person's talking about TikTokers and not mm -hmm. people that are like in traditional media. Because TikTokers be very, are accessible. Yes, they're accessible. So all of a sudden yeah. it would be very easy that this person would be at the same sort of like party. They're similar age. They're mm -hmm. gay. They could be at the same gay bar. And then like that wall is broken and you're like, oh, these are actual people, not like little micro celebrities that I can make fun of. And you get let in on on the planning of stuff if there is planning or if there's not planning. Mm -hmm. But like there's I remember. Planning. OK, oh, there's, there's planning. There's I planning. There's planning. planning. There's planning. That's the other thing that's BS is like, I think I think Kales might even know that there's planning and not tell the, the oh, viewers. Maybe. Here's my thing. I don't think Kale's getting paid enough. Kale is personally making some of these people's careers like blow up by I'm, creating like a PR storm no, and Kale's not no. getting a cut of the check. Why I disagree. Aren't they a cut I of the disagree. Check? Kale's is a bad <laughs> businesswoman. If oh. Kale's can't take advantage, if Kale's mm. can't take advantage of the drama, I'm yeah. really, I'm just shit talking Kale's. Kale's, no, if you're listening to this, this is a comedy podcast. <laughs> None of this is real. But this I, bit was serious. <laughs> Maybe Kale's though is a purist the way I am and just, and just genuinely feels how they feel. That's that's you and Kale mm -hmm. should actually we should talk because yeah. I'm so bad at monetizing Kale's. I I never I don't make <laughs> any money. <laughs> and my podcast is so successful. I'm right there with you, Remy. No, Ashley. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Please yeah, yeah. help us monetize. Please help. If you're listening to this at post bit, here's the official stance of the podcast. The official stance of the <laughs> We're Having Gay Sex podcast on the TikTok lesbian drama is that we don't know what the fuck is going on and we have no opinion. And Kales, you keep doing you, boo-boo. You're yes. obviously get very good at connecting with your fan base and getting and hearing what the giving them what they want to hear. The end. That At the end. <laughs> Wait, can I introduce you, Remy? We're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with one of my dearest friends, Remy Casimir. Woo! Yeah. I love having gay sex. Woo, woo, yes. Woo. Remy is the host. Remy is a comedian. Do you still do your weekly show, Bacon Bits? No, not anymore. Not post-pandemic. Do you have a show? 
I have no shows right Besides now. Besides your, I've just been touring your incredible and, yeah. podcast, which was on on Netflix Explained. Yeah. Um. It's a. It's like I probably got tons of awards and accolades. How come if you, you are dealing with a sexual stuff, Remy has almost certainly got an episode about it and mm. a lot about orgasms if you're having trouble orgasming, but then also all kinds of other stuff. Go for the orgasm. Stay for the charismatic, hilarious shit stirring tea oh, talking yeah. host remy <laughs> casimir thank you <laughs> happy to be here um and then i guess i basically remy do you want to tell people well uh yeah i'm ashley gavin cis gay white woman she her pronouns for the love of fucking god get on my text list uh and if this comes out we're doing a live pod in new york city that we are also streaming online tickets are available on my website Yada, yada, yada. And then, as always, sometimes the <laughs> chancellor of cancellor from up north. Are, uh, is that caribou? Is that caribou entwining their antlers with another caribou? Is that what Canadian scissoring is? Give it up for <laughs> Brienne Williamson. Oh, Shut okay. up, Brie. That was good. <laughs> No, that was great. I, I <laughs> wait. Is Kale's gonna come for us? I can I say hi? <laughs> can I do it? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Wait. Sorry. I'm. 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 I'm spiraling over Kale's. No, it's okay. I just forgot if I was supposed to. Hey, I'm Brian Williams. <laughs> it's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> holy shit i'm so scared of kales i'm not joking you she has no like i swear to god the you thing haven't even said your pronouns you identify oh. as being scared of <laughs> kales she her lesbian from canada and remy do you uh she they everyone are we are we talking about who we're attracted to <laughs> bisexual <Yeah>. from <laughs> from new york <laughs> I love it. No, I love seriously. the idea of like a queer cage mash where like the bisexual <laughs> from New York City coming in with she, they pronouns at 105 pounds. Please. In my bra. <laughs> but anyway, I don't really have a great gay sex. So we'll, we'll jump into it. But mine sort of. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. Before yep. this, I was thinking. Oh, my God. For the first time in my life, my love life doesn't feel like the focus of my entire existence. Is that cool or what? It's super cool. Yeah. But I'm also feeling like I'm in a I'm on the hamster wheel with my career right now. I feel like yeah. I've reached a point of equilibrium. I'm not sure how to get to the next level, but I keep running on this little wheel. Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to adjust my attitude to love the fucking wheel. You know, yeah. the, the, this wheel is my wheel. I made this wheel. Do you feel like, I kind of think about this sometimes, that it's like, there's two things. One, be successful in career, and one, be successful in the relationship, and never the twix shall meet. Like, Yeah. Yeah. There's an Australian saying, and, and Australians, listeners, let me know if I'm wrong about this. But there's a saying that you you have four burners on the stove. You've got your family, you've got love, you've got friendship, and you've got work or whatever the four burners are. And you really can't ever have more than two burners going mm. because you're going to like lose. You can't have all of them cooking perfect at the same time because just too many burners, too many pots on the stove. Those Australians are poets, I tell you. <laughs> Jeez. They're like, we don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Burn the house down. <laughs> oh man they're 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 like we use a barbie you fucking idiot um <laughs> but anyway so that that's what i was thinking i was thinking recently like i i said to my page because we've been doing these live zoom calls yeah. to the patrons and stuff like that patreon.com slash whgs it's funding my special i'm not fucking around please for the love of fucking god <laughs> <laughs> i uh I was saying to them, it's like weird because usually on this podcast, I'm so vulnerable about like, you know, Brie, I bring you on. I cry about my breakup or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And lately, I feel like I haven't had a lot to say on my relationship status mm -hmm. because it's just sort of like I'm in an equilibrium right now of trying to figure out what 
okay, like I've gotten far enough in my career that I'm sus- like made this sustainable thing mm-hmm. yeah. in comedy, which is super cool. Very hard to Thank do. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Trying very hard. Mm-hmm. But now it's like, what the fuck do I talk about on my gay sex podcast? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't have about any... the guests. Here's the thing. So I've had this same thing happen with how come, obviously, right? Because I started it out. It was my journey to have an orgasm. Then I had an orgasm. Then it was like, what do we do next? Can I shut it down? They said, no, have them different ways. I said, great, I did. Then they were like, yeah. bring Ben into it. And then it was like, okay. But then at a certain point, it's like, this is our sex life. You know, and it's like, I don't want to be doing things for the audience. I don't want to bring him into stuff that he doesn't want to do just for content. You're tagging Ben. Ben is like, please, (laughs) please, I don't want to do this anymore. (laughs) I literally have so many butt plugs that have been sent to me and people have been like, put one in Ben. And I'm like, he doesn't want that. Like, leave him alone. (laughs) For the pod. Yeah. Um, No, but I, I was just like, I got to be a little bit real. I got to be a little bit real with people about where I'm at. Like this Mm -hmm. is my career figuring out how to ascend to this next level, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. is dominating my brain right now. Mm -hmm. And so, Oh my God. What? What? Is that your stomach? No. When does the (laughs) horniness? (laughs) (laughs) Well, the thing is like, I'm trying to enjoy it. Like this podcast is part of my art. Mm-hmm. I never thought this podcast would be one of the biggest parts of my art, <laughs> but it is. So I'm like going to try and enjoy this. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to <laughs> enjoy being on this because <laughs> usually I hate Bree's laughing. Usually I hate it so much. No, that's not what I'm saying. But like, I don't want it to feel like a chore. Totally. I don't want these little moments of things to feel like a chore. I want to like enjoy this thing that mm-hmm. I've created because it is like, so cool and thank you to everyone who's been such a huge part of it like it's so cool yeah and now i have to adapt my brain to being like well you you you're plateauing at a certain level and like it's okay you might be at this plateau for a while and it's okay it's you, part of it can you even it's yeah. part of it you yeah. can't always be going up that's exhausting you have to right like, and plateau. that's the part of my brain that's so fucking sick you yeah. know what i'm saying no. and that's why you do this but also listeners will understand that you need to do this and that they also should be doing that in their own lives. You can't, sometimes it's like, Oh, I achieved the thing. Let's just bask in the thing. Enjoy that one. Mm -hmm. Bask in the thing. I'm trying to bask in the thing while also trying to, you know, (laughs) not get to the next level, not (laughs) bask, just fully beat myself up. (laughs) But I will say I'm not, I haven't been, and maybe it's because I've been super sick. I've been sick for like two weeks. I have chronic sinusitis as a whole thing, Same, but Oh my God, really? Yeah, I wasn't going to get surgery. and ugh. I got the surgery. Ugh. It helped a lot, Good. but I still every now and then have one of these long battles with my fucking nose and face. <laughs> um, but I was going to say, my sex drive has been not that high the past month. Mm. And yeah. then, then I said, oh my God, because I got scared, Brie. I was like, oh. I got scared. <laughs> About what? Yeah. I still don't know. About my <laughs> about my sex drive being lower. But it's okay. Oh, okay. That's okay. Remember, remember that episode of Sex in the City where Samantha Jones thinks she lost her orgasms because she's just like going through a time. Like I'm kind of going through that right now and I think about it all the time. But she comes back, you know, like she does. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Don't worry. You'll bounce back. Your your vagina's being like, edit. We don't have time to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or just like figure out what, I don't know. It's weird. I feel, it's just a weird time. I feel disconnected from my stand-up. I've, ha- I've felt disconnected from my stand-up mm. for long periods of time Same. in a way that I never used to when I was, when no one knew who the fuck I was and I was just hustling and writing all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I just, so I can say this out loud now. I was pitching this TV show with Diablo Cody. She wrote Ooh. Juno and Jennifer's Body and stuff yeah. like that. And, yeah, so um, cool. Something else. United States of Tara, Tara. Yeah. A lot of things. Yeah. She's like won an Academy Award. Yeah. And it just like, it. the market's really bad right now. Mm-hmm. It didn't get bought, which is mm-hmm. like crazy because it's, you know, Diablo Cody or whatever. But then yeah. we had a regroup meeting and she was like, let's turn this into a movie which was like incredibly flattering and you know i'm really trying so much is happening behind the scenes but like not pushing me up and it just feels like oh my god when is this gonna i just keep 
do keep churning yada 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 yeah yeah that's what sucks about the doing business part of show business because Mm -hmm. you're not able to show your effort you know like i want to show like here's me writing a draft and here's me pitching and like that's fucking weird because what if the thing doesn't happen and so many so many times it doesn't happen or it, it usually doesn't repurposed happen, yeah. exactly or it takes a break it takes a fucking break it just sits shelled for years and then it comes back like you just have to you have to trust so the guess, process unfortunately yeah i yeah. guess to everyone and i've been through this before in this industry and come out the other side and i guess if anyone at home is feeling like oh man i'm i'm in a plateau some a, a teacher of mine in college said this really cool thing to me that I try to remember all the time, which is you might feel like you're going in circles, but you're actually on a spiral staircase. Yeah. And at some point, I love that. Yeah. Isn't Mm -hmm. that really cool? Yeah. And at some point you'll look out and you'll be like, Oh, I was going up. It just was like, it felt slower. My therapist always says that, but like in reference to like, choose something that you have right now that a year ago or five years ago or whatever Mm. you thought wouldn't be possible. Which and is like everything good, yeah. I have going on. Yeah. So I don't know what's wrong with me. What do you think Kales thinks about? <laughs> <laughs> the Jojo Siwa, Avery, Soph drama? Ash, do I feel think- like we need to get Kales on here and confront Kales head on. <laughs> she is, is Why? Ash there? I'm yeah, so can you not see me? My face was definitely like fully like, why haven't we had Kales on? Hold on, I got a text Kales. Give me one second. <laughs> They're buying all of it. I have all the inside information. Um well that's my that's like my non-gay sex, I'm on a hamster mm-hmm. wheel feeling kind of blech. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also things are amazing at the same time. And thank you everybody for supporting me. Listener, don't forget to support the Patreon, patreon.com slash WHGS. That's how we pay Alex. He is a full-time employee of the podcast. We could not pay him on ads alone. Me also. This is full-time work, so please consider going and donating. And in return for those donations, you get bonus episodes. You get comped tickets when I'm in your city. Um, You get extended, unfiltered, uncut episodes. um, Weekly access to my Zoom stream of my show in New York and lots of other stuff. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, I'm always looking for better ways to have sex, both by myself and with a partner, and that's why I love Foria. Imagine the best orgasm or sex you've ever had. Now imagine that it could be even better with products that were designed to naturally enhance sexual pleasure and give you access to bigger and better orgasms. That's what Foria did for me. So what's Foria? Well, Foria uses all natural and plant-based ingredients to intensify sexual pleasure and relieve discomfort. It has a serious cult following with tens of thousands of people who've had their sex lives transformed through using their products. I like their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil. And if you're wondering, well, what's an arousal oil? It's like it's like a juicy warm-up that gets you really turned on, listener, and it increases your pleasure and deepens your orgasms. It uses CBD and warming, sensation-inducing organic botanicals that enhance arousal. It's really, really good stuff. So yes, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more, deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible. And you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley or use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order. I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil You'll thank me later, listener. Remy, did you have gay sex this week? Yeah, and that I didn't come and he did, so it was like... <laughs> I think that's straight sex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, he, just the man... Yeah, that's straight sex, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the gays will be thrilled to know that straight sex has not gotten better and that they've, <laughs> they've made the right decision coming out of the closet and living their best authentic... Truth. Listen, if I could fall out of love tomorrow and have a girlfriend, I would. I would. <laughs> I have to get some sort of gay sex. We've talked about this has been <laughs> gossip slash <laughs> professional growth. Up, it, yeah. There's been almost no gay sex on this episode. I know. Okay. My only thing is that I will say I'm in a like a kind of sexual orgasm drought. Like, yeah, hmm. we're. It's not fun. It's really hard to come. My favorite toy is not working. 
I feel oh. very oh. like weird in my Wait, do you know about the recently? womanizer? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> What? I cut you off. Go on. Talk about your feelings. I'm so sorry. Kales. Kales. <laughs> Wait. I did not mean to invalidate Remy's feelings. I know you're going to come for me for invalidating Remy's feelings. <laughs> Ashley. Yes. The womanizer is not my favorite anymore. It's not? No. It's the plus one air pulse arouser that you can get from Target because it's got the same warranty as the other electronics at Target. And it's cheaper. <laughs> So do you bring it How- back with the warranty, like <laughs> wildly used? Like that's what yes. I need to know. Yes, Brie, you're coming in. Everyone's like, what is that smell? <laughs> it's just beat the fuck up. It's BV. Kind of it's BV. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm trying to kick it. It just won't go away. <laughs> One time I had a, a, vi- a vibe, like a back massager. Mm-hmm. And uh, it ran out of batteries like mid go or whatever. And the worst. I, I think I was the still on the high of like wanting the orgasm. So in a panic, I was trying to get the back of it open to put new batteries in. Mm-hmm. And like I was just like going at this thing like with the with a, to- a random tool I found. OK, <laughs> another another vibrator, <laughs> like a caveman just hacking at this thing, trying to get this open. And when I like came to out of this haze, the back of it was like scratched and dented and destroyed. <laughs> and I'm like, how bad did I need this fucking orgasm? <laughs> this is a this is a sight. So I get it. I get it. Wait, Remy, I cut you off right when you were getting vulnerable. But do you think it's like you're emo- um, an emotional thing or like a physical thing? That's how all my orgasms feel now. It's like I get cut <laughs> off right before I get emotional. And oh. it's fine. No, it's not. I'm I'm upset about it. Like mm. there are some days that I'm just like, I just really want to come. I just want to come and then I'll sit down and do my work. But like, I, do, I feel very slighted at this moment. And I have to do the same thing that you're doing. It's just be patient and know that it'll come back and... I don't know. How long has it been? Like, it's not that it's okay. It's been a few months, but it's like, like I'll come like once a month now where. Okay. In the beginning. So there's some movement. Yeah. But in the beginning of coming, it was like every day, three times a day. And now I'm like, did I use them up? Like, no, you didn't use them up. <laughs> you wanna, little chips not out like of a jar. Yeah. In your fertility. How can I buy more Candy Crush coins? <laughs> Do you think it's your mood? I think I'm really stressed. I have a lot going on. Mm-hmm. and uh, Remy, what's going on? Things behind the scenes that I can't fucking post about and get accolades we'll, for. We'll cut this part for Kales. We'll <laughs> cut this part. Tell me what's going on. I'm starting another podcast. With oh, that's great! A network this time. Wait, Alex, which... you don't. I don't know that you actually have to cut this. Does she, Does Alex have to cut this? No, no, no. You guys can. You can know. Um, it is happening. <laughs> uh, it's just not announced yet what it is, but it was. It's with a network, so it's going to be more scheduled, and you know, that's awesome. You're going to have help. Up. Yeah, having. Good. That's why my hair is washed today. Um, <laughs> And yeah, pitching some scripted things and just mm-hmm. that's great, Remy. I'm, I'm so happy for you. House hunting as well. Thank you. A you're lot house of, hunting. Yeah. Well, you know, you're gonna, looking. You're for gonna a buy? Place. No, to live. I'm staying. Where I'm, are you now? Look at this is my child at home. Oh, you're you're at home right now. Mm-hmm. Are you that's, in New York? Yeah. Are you on the Upper East Side? Hell yeah. Oh. We should hang out. Come I thought you were in New Jersey. No, some days. Some days I'm in Jersey at my boyfriend's, and some days I'm at my dad's, and I need to not live at a man's house. I need my own house. That's why you can't come. I you think so. Pri- I don't have enough privacy. You need your own space. Yeah. Well, Remy, thank you so much for the for the gossip. We're going to go to Brianne. <laughs> I'm so excited to Over listen. Over to Brianne. This what is with the energy on this episode? What is what is this? We're just I'm, two best friends competing mm-hmm. for your love. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just one podcast host competing to have a best friend. That's what it feels like to me. All right, you little pervert. Every week I get on this podcast and I talk about the sex I've been having. And you know, it's on a helix. You know, most of the time. 
that my mattress of choice for gay sex is the Helix. Why? Because when you're done from a good sesh, you want to be able to pass out immediately. (laughs) You're tired. Your arm hurts. It's time to go to bed. I've had my Helix mattress for two years now. It's the best mattress I've ever owned. And the reason it's the best mattress I've ever owned is because Helix understands that everybody is unique. I went to helixsleep.com slash gay sex and I took their two minute mattress quiz. I put in that I slept on my stomach and my side and that I had lower back pain and it made a custom mattress choice for me. And now I'm having the best sleep of my life. I sleep like a little gay baby. The Helix lineup is so customized that it includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. You get 100 nights to try it out risk-free, and if you don't like it, but I assure you, you will like it, they will come and pick it up for you. No questions asked. And don't stress about it because it's got a 10 or 15 year warranty. If it doesn't work for you, they stand behind it, listener. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Listener, if you've been listening a while, you know I'm a big self-care fan. I meditate. I go to the gym. I take vitamins. But you got to make time for that. For that other type of self care, that the self care that that pent up, that pent up, you gotta get that sweet sweet release, listener, the kind that helps you fall asleep at night. If you're having trouble with that kind of stuff, then I know about an app that can help you transport your mind to a world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires. With Dipsy, self care has never sounded better. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed just for you. They bring to life scenarios with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. Dipsy has stories for straight and queer listeners, and 56% of stories are voice acted by people of color. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. For listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash gay. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash gay. That's Dipsy stories.com slash gay. Oh, uh, this is, I'm having a lot of fun personally. Good. That's good. Did you have gay sex this week? Yeah, but you know what? I want to talk about um, a hole that I'm in on Tumblr. A hole. <laughs> different <laughs> hole. Um, yeah, different sort of hole. And it's all the fetish Tumblr or Tumblr. What am I fucking talking about? See, I'm aging myself. I'm literally going back to when I was 16 coming out on Tumblr. TikTok. I'm on TikTok. In a fetish hole on TikTok. Yes. Um, Why can there be fetish stuff on TikTok, but I don't go viral anymore? This is my thing. It's It's very very confusing to me because I will post anything that's like even slightly just like even comedically sexual. Like I would say like almost g-rated light mm-hmm. vibes right, in right. comparison to what i some of the what i see and then there's right. like full-on fetish content happening yes that is, and okay my new favorite thing is i've seen this for years right like i'm sure people have seen on facebook like all the food videos and stuff where they're not actually making Look, food oh, oh. No. no it's just a chicken breast that it looks like you're gonna fuck it oh yeah. and they're they're massaging these, it they're and putting their fingers it. in it and they're, they're splitting the open a chicken breast and you're like, now I'm going to be turned on anytime <laughs> I see chicken. The bread talk. The dough. I, I know her era is over. <laughs> Kale's come for me. I don't like the bread talk. I don't like bread talk. I don't like watching this bitch smack in the ass of a bread. It makes I me uncomfortable. It. I love it. No. <laughs> No, there's one person on there. I don't know who they are, but they smack a lot of bread and I like them. But mm-hmm. no, I think no. it's inappropriate. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, no, my thing is more. I've seen this for years and I've always like been like, this is a thing. Like there must be something to it. It's the same as those videos that go viral on like Facebook um, that it's like some girl that's like, oh, I'm going to like change the color of my dress and it takes her like fucking an hour to do a like five second craft. Anyways, I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, this is weird. Why does it always go viral? And now it's all over. Wait, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. It's very hard to explain besides the fact that should I pull one up? There'll be all, yeah, there'll be all these, like, I don't know how you even find it. There'll be all these like DIY, things that they're it's always the like husband yeah. filming yes. or the boyfriend oh. filming Are, wait so right? this is the one with the cake right yes with the, 
Oh, yes. this is how we make a drippy cake. And it takes six parts to make a drippy cake. Yes. And so she's <laughs> she's got this cake, this uh, this plain cake, right? Wait, Brie, I have to cut you off. Remy is too much in an emotional spiral. Remy, why are you so upset about it taking six parts to make a drippy cake? I need to know. Fuck? What mm-hmm. the fuck? I want to see the drippy cake outcome. I'm not here for the fetish. I'm here for the I'm here for the outcome, not the cum cum. You know, like I I want to see what this cake looks like. I want to see the sprinkles cascade, and I I don't like this woman baiting me over and over again. Oh oh, we're, oh, we're just gonna, gonna do it, it now. I'm gonna do it now. Uh, 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 it's like cake drippy cake burlesque. It's horrible. <laughs> Okay, so this is what happened. I was finally scrolling and I think TikTok realized that I was viewing enough of these videos and <laughs> going deep into the comments to try and find yeah. what the fuck is going on. Like, why do so, so many people So is there something sexual like about the buildup of not seeing yes. the okay, drippy? Yes, okay, so I found all, I finally found all these people on TikTok that are also sex workers that are unpacking these videos from behind the scenes and they're talking about the fetishes that are in the videos. So like giving like the reason that they're doing all this stuff and the biggest we one we have to get one of these to yes. see and the biggest one is edging so the yeah. reason that they're doing that uh, in six parts and they're like like ash they'll take the icing and they're about to like pull it off and they'll like go like this and they're like stroking the icing and then they'll be like oh i just forgot the sprinkles and then they'll yeah. do that again then they'll be like oh i just forgot this and the husband's behind the camera like Oh yeah, let it drip <laughs> on the cake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, another another pink, another pink. Yeah, another uh, yes. And twist it, twist it lower, push it. To, now pull it. Now twist it. Like it's like bop it. Yes. Like but like for six parts, six parts. Yes. And it's always the worst outcome. Like they're never doing it, and there's no good result. I wonder if it's men that like this, or like people with penises versus people with vulvas, or women. <laughs> or whatever that the women are just like I just want to fucking see the, the, the drips I don't no. need to be teased I, I don't get drips hardly ever okay yes. drips maybe once a month yes. or like people that are genuinely trying to make a fucking cake they're like what the hell is going on <laughs> Yes. Okay, so I saw one cooking channel that I followed that I liked. And Wait, the people who are trying to make a cake are like, why am I hard right now? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, Wait, so twist it again? Okay. <laughs> when I was watching no, when I was watching one this is serious. I'm trying to get vulnerable here. When I was watching one of these <laughs> sex workers describe why this is a fetish piece, and as she was describing it and I was watching, she was doing one of those duets, I was like, why am I all of a sudden getting it? Interesting. Like I started got feeling kind of kind of because I was starting to pay too much attention to the hand movements and things. Yeah, she was pointing out all the different things that she was doing, and then I was like, I'm kind of getting it. Like I, I don't now. I'm I'm infiltrated. I'm in too deep. But I the thing is, is that they found this perfect like niche where they can advertise and do this fetish Sex. content yeah. without it getting flagged. Mm-hmm. How do we turn this podcast into one of those cake things? <laughs> do we just need to hold up a cake? No, put your feet in the frame. <laughs> yes. Get dirtier somehow. Yeah, like that, like they do a lot of the smashing, right? They do a lot of the <laughs> <laughs> I do have wiki feet now, so we got to get more Me content. Me too! <laughs> We all have wiki feet in here, except Alex, unless Alex or something. Wait, Ashley, do you remember when I called you crying because somebody had a wiki feet and I didn't? <laughs> I, do, I don't remember you crying, but I do remember you being like really kind of petty. I was like, what the fuck? I was crying. <laughs> You're like, I'm giving the great feed content. What's going on? Yeah. Wait, will you text it to me right now? <laughs> yeah, but don't read it. I won't read it out loud, uh, but I will react. Okay. <laughs> Oh fuck! Another big thing: if you see a if you see a woman in a wedding dress anywhere on TikTok or Facebook, it's oh, fetish that would content. really ups- that I do actually remember. Sorry, it's yes. Content. Wait, Brie, finish what you're saying. Seeing someone in a, a wedding dress, what now? This has been wildly pointed out that if you see someone on a we- in a wedding dress anywhere on TikTok or Facebook, like in any of these little clip videos, that's a fetish. Specifically, the wedding dress. Hmm. Huh. That and pregnancy. 
So there's a lot of people with like fake pregnant bellies or they're doing stuff with that. And you're like, why are they doing that? That's a big one too. And who are these fet- their fetishes for all genders? Because I feel like these are things that scare the straight cis boys off. Like marriage, babies. Like, I what? don't know. Sorry, I'm what? learning a lot. I'm- they're like, oh my God, that's so kinky. Like getting getting someone's hand in marriage and taking care of them and having them taking care of me. Ah, that's hot. <laughs> No, but there's always a weird twist. It's always like, it's always like, oh, my, uh, I got my wife pregnant and then now she's leaving me for my like Marine brother and the brother will like come in at the end and like take him, take her away. That's yeah. That's like a porn that's script. Porn. Yeah. That's okay. That's without the porn. Okay. Don't you feel like the economy is going to collapse? Cause don't you <laughs> feel like it, now that people are exploiting the sexual brain to make not sexual content to continue their careers, someone mm-hmm. wanted to just make cakes. Someone just wanted to make cakes on the internet, mm-hmm. and start a little blog, mm-hmm. but now they're making edging porn. Okay, because they need this to stay what, alive. This is what happened. Be- because we, we're just reduced to our sexuality and our weird, most <sighs> base urges. Yes, there was a TikTok account that was that started and it was this nice woman who was just trying to become a food TikToker, okay? So she'd make the food TikToks and I found her like right when I got TikTok and I followed her because she was making really good food, like not the shitty like viral food where they're not actually trying we to make food. Like cakes. No. Yeah, she was making good <laughs> cakes and good chicken that she wasn't like fingering as she made yeah. it. <laughs> and then But to be fair, Finger the chicken. I I don't mind it. Okay. So then I guess it wasn't like popping off in the way. And she probably saw these other videos that were doing really well. So all of a sudden out of nowhere, now her husband's behind the camera giving little commentary bits and she's doing all this extra stuff and like edging us to the the end. (laughs) And yeah, all of a sudden she started fucking the cake. And I'm like, I came here for the food. (laughs) I came here for the food. And now you're making fetish content. And I don't even think you know that you're making fetish content. And it's wild to me. Well, I, I think she does know what she's doing because, dude, I, I mess around on stage all the time <laughs> where I make fun of myself, where I start doing some... <laughs> I don't start fucking the mic. That's not what I'm doing. I mess but around start, all the time on stage. <laughs> I, I, I start doing a bit and then I'm like, oh... I'll say to ca- lesbian comedian, nah. like it gets in your head. Like what's going to go viral? What's not going to go viral? And then you're disconnected from your, mm-hmm. from your craft. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just want to make jokes and some of my funniest content, some of my best crowd work mm-hmm. that I've ever done does not go viral because it's not sensational or sexual yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It just drives me crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what I was going to say is it's interesting that you're talking about content creators like this like that oh they they don't even mean to be doing sexual some of them don't mean to be doing it but because it's become sexualized that that becomes yeah. a big part of their audience and i was noticing mm-hmm. on tiktok like a few months ago how there were these mommy creators who were getting yelled at because they were like you're making content for you know files basically to ingest yeah and yeah and some of the accounts you were like I can see that they, you know, put the kid in an outfit or they put them in a tub or something like that, that like could be misconstrued as that. Um, Mm. But it's children have to bathe. (laughs) I know. But but then there are these other creators that like we're getting yelled at. And it's like, I don't think that they know like how how people are using this footage of their kids. Yeah, I would never put my kid on the Internet. That's just like a a thing that I have. Yeah. But I think yeah, they probably were just like, I'm a mommy blogger. Because you also know the Internet enough. That's the thing. I think like Remy, I agree with you. I think a lot of these people, not just mommy bloggers, but these fucking cake fuckers and all these people, (laughs) they don't know. And listen, right now, just the we're having gay sex podcast official opinion on cake fuckers is that it's okay. We see you. We validate you. Keep doing what you do. But it but it does. It does irritate me like I'm angry. But I think that's the point. They like some people like feeling angry, right? (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's my whole twitter feed they're like you want to see something that makes you mad <laughs> yeah that's the internet something that makes you mad but also you want to fuck it oh horrible <laughs> um brie i'm sorry if i interrupted you too many times no. i i feel like 
usually we do the episodes with more internet-y people and not comedians, and then I get a comedian on, and I go to riff. I go to fucking riff town, and I it's can't okay. stop. Yeah, I was just trying to be vulnerable, and you just stomped all over me. It's totally fine, though. It's the totally thing is okay. that the people know that we used to be best friends, and we're not best friends anymore because of the podcast, but we're locked into a relationship because of the podcast. And you guys, if you haven't heard the fight, <laughs> listen to the episode again. Download yeah. and subscribe. <laughs> That's true. If you want to be edged in a fight, <laughs> Remy, what are you working on? Where do you want people to find you? We're we're wrapping up now, right, Alex? We're about done. Well, okay. So so come follow me on Instagram. I hope to be out of jail soon. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok. Everything's Remy Casimir. If you want to come see me do stand up, RemyCasimir.com. And I have How Come on all platforms. Again, if you don't know how to come, we will help you. Or anything you're feeling sexually weird about. We'll talk about it and you'll feel okay. And Remy, you go on tour, right? I do. And all my dates are on the website, except for today, because I've been a bad girl. Um, and then I have another <laughs> podcast coming out, and that will be October 30th that it's announced. So stay, stay tuned. tuned. Wow, well, wait. You're not allowed to talk about it, even though it's coming out in four days? Um, yes. <laughs> I love. All right, talk that. about edging. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Build yeah. up. <laughs> well, Bree, plug your stuff. Um. Okay. I am Brianne Williamson. You can find me everywhere, Brianne Williamson. And also, right now, I am funding for my next film. So yes, that's yes, which might everywhere. have some might have some really fun special guest appearances in it. Yes. Whoa. So I would very much appreciate. I know Ash is sucking you dry already over on the Patreon, but if you have any coins left under the couch cushions, <laughs> come on over and help me out. And I also Listen, have another podcast. I can explain podcast. It's a great podcast. <laughs> Pop charting in Canada. Yeah. Wow. It's gay. Brie is one of the funniest people on the planet. Go support <laughs> her work, her films. Listen, Thank you. I know that I never shut up about my Patreon because it is my it is the lifeblood of this podcast. Most people are not as shameless it. as I am. I am shameless. Oh, I, I never stop. And that's why it kind of works. But most people <laughs> most people have pride. OK, and Brie has pride. So I'm going to say this for her. Go to her fucking Patreon. Give her one dollar. Wait, how many, what's your lowest tier? It's a Kickstarter, actually. <laughs> Go to her Kickstarter. We didn't even know what it, you didn't say Kickstarter. It's on Kickstarter. It's linked in my in my bio at Brianne Williamson. Thank you so much. <sighs> And then my Patreon, which funds this podcast, my special, we have live streamed events. We have the four bonus episodes that come out of this podcast every month. Stand up comedy. So much fucking shit, dude. It's the second best thing that you can fund beyond, besides Brienne's <laughs> Kickstarter. But she will be booted from this immediately. <laughs> this will all be cut. This will all be cut. Cut, cut, cut. Nope, she's going to keep everything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening i hope you enjoyed the episode patreon.com slash whgs to donate as little as one dollar if you've been enjoying this for free my tour dates you know go sign up for the text alert to support my tour and my special it's more fun than a podcast i think stand-up comedy is so much fun and uh sydney is going to be doing the gay thought because i don't have any thoughts sydney my assistant hello uh you guys pay her salary so thank you hello um, this is sh straight off the dome, because I didn't really think before this, but uh, <laughs> Alex liked that. Well, I did certainly go, ugh, gay thought, and then yelled Sydney. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's exactly what I went, ugh, gay thought, Sydney! <laughs> so you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know how in a queer relationship, you tend to move a little bit faster than maybe in a straight relationship? But also, I've noticed that you move out of it just as quickly as you moved into it. Is that true for you? For me, no. For me, I get trapped. Not so much anymore since I've done work on myself. But for me, I get, I get into that U-Haul and it does not open from the inside. I have to claw my way out of that thing. Well, for me, what happens is that <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in the U-Haul in the front seat, passenger, the front passenger seat. And um, then suddenly I'm not in the U-Haul anymore. And I don't know what happened. 
Oh, so you're saying you've been kicked out of the U-Haul? Well, <laughs> this is such an interesting metaphor. Um, yeah, well, not kicked out. I'm just confused about where it park- I parked it. <laughs> you got out of the U-Haul and you went to find it in the parking lot and you can't find it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, this episode is sponsored by Foria. Yes, listener, you have my permission to try this. I fully endorse you to go ahead and treat yourself to more, deeper, fuller pleasure wherever you can find it as often as possible, and you can start with a bottle of Foria. Foria is offering a special deal for our listeners. Get 20% off your first order by visiting foriawellness.com slash Ashley or use code Ashley at checkout. That's F-O-R-I-A wellness.com forward slash Ashley for 20% off your first order, and I recommend trying their Awaken Arousal Oil and Sex Oil. You'll thank me later.